All right, today we're gonna to talk about balance, which is the principle of design concerned with visualizing, equalizing visual elements. So in visual imbalance it creates the feeling of uneasiness. Like in this uh, picture of the Leaning Tower Pisa, it's kind of an uneasy feeling. You feel like it's going to fall over at any second. So a work of art must contain balance in order for it to look right. Formal balance is the equal or similar elements are placed on both sides of a central axis. And formal balance is the easiest type of balance to create and recognize. So it, with formal balance, we have the concept of symmetry. Uh, symmetry is when a work of art looks like a mirror image on both sides of a central axis. And symmetry expresses dignity, endurance, and stability. And uh, But the downside of syllab uh, symmetry is that it can be predictable, boring, or dull. So I have some photos and some artwork showing uh, symmetry. So you can imagine a, uh, a line going down the center of this photograph, and it's almost a mirror image on both sides of the photo. That's what gives this symmetry. You can imagine a line going down this one. And there's a lot of pho uh, photography that is symmetrical. So in this painting right here, you can have all of these angels are symmetrical. Like if you look at the upper left-hand corner is balanced by the upper right-hand corner. This angel that has this U-shape is balanced by another angel that has this U-shape. This angel in the lower left with this big billowing fabric here is mirrored on the other side with this angel going the other direction with the big billowing fabric. And not all the time is the, um, the central axis right in the middle of the picture. The central uh, symmetry is very appealing, possibly because of the bilateral symmetry of our own human body. So if you take a line and draw it down the middle of the human body, it's the same on both sides. It's the same with a face. A face is relatively the same on both sides. And that gives us the, the, the feeling of where that's what leads to this feeling of order when we look at things that are symmetrical because we're so used to seeing our face, which is symmetrical. So in an architecture, you know, you have a symmetrical architecture in order to give the feeling of like peace and uh, stability. In artworks, yeah, we can have, you can imagine a central axis going down the center of this and it creates a symmetrical composition. This Frida Kahlo, the column that is her spine, uh, acts as a an axis down the middle of her of her uh, body. The cross acts as an axis, and you can see the axis even with the fold of the the guy's jacket right down the middle. It's the same on both sides. The Masaccio painting is the same on both sides. So this shows up a lot in art. You can take these uh, these images and have an imaginary line go down the middle and it's the same on both sides. So this is all symmetrical artworks. Approximate symmetry is when it's almost the same on both sides, the same comfortable feeling of symmetry, but with small differences. So in this uh, painting of American Gothic by Grant Wood, you know, it's obvious that the man is bigger than the woman. Uh, so there's this slight difference of size, but she has a pattern on her. So um, there's some things that artists can do to balance things out if it's not the same size. The pattern on her fabric attracts our eye, so that gives it more visual weight. So even though she's smaller, she has an equal amount of weight than him because she has a pattern on her fabric and he does not. So uh, here are some factors that influence visual weight. So size, larger shapes look heavier. So if you can imagine even like a, um, if you had a scale and you put uh, uh, like a, a pint of milk on one side of the scale and a gallon of milk on the other side, the, the larger portion of milk is going to be heavier. And even if you're just looking at a photograph, you know, and, and it doesn't actually weigh any different, larger objects appear heavier. All right, contours. Complicated shapes look more interesting and seem heavier than uh, simple shapes. 
Colors, bright colors or high intensity colors appear heavier than dull colors. With values, sharp contrast and value has more visual weight than a weak contrast and value. And then texture, rough texture has more weight than smooth texture. So that's how we can uh, balance things out even though things are different sizes. All right, so here we have uh, the, the photograph is balanced out even though these are two different things. A girl is not a tuba, but it's balanced out because you know, the girl is larger than the tuba, but the uh, shiny texture, the harsh contrast, attracts our eye on the tuba. And also the complicated shape of the tuba attracts our eye. So it, it balances things out. So here we have Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. And Diego is definitely much larger than her, but she has brighter colors than he does. And also her colors are contrasted. Uh, red and green are opposite colors on the color wheel, color wheel, and they have a stronger contrast. And he's wearing these dull, dark colors. So even though he is larger than her, she balances out with him because she has the, uh, the contrast of colors. Uh, again, here, she is smaller than he is, but she has the brighter, uh, the brighter uh, colors, and that for, therefore it balances him out. All right, here we have a difference of uh, color. So there's more going on on the left side of the picture. There's more uh, complicated uh, things on the left with all the coins and the little things on the table. But she is wearing brighter colors, and therefore they balance out. All right, and then we have odd things like the lamb on the right side. And so we have, you know, a, one man and a lamb is balancing out three people on the left. Okay, here we have uh, three people on the right side and four people on the left, but this there's a guy on the right side who has a complicated pattern on his uh, 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 in his fabric, and that balances out the extra people there on the left. But here's more examples of approximate symmetry. It's not quite the same on both sides, but it does kind of balance out. It's not quite the same on both sides, but it balances out. And then here, like, so, you know, in the center, this egg shape and then the umbrella shape above it, it looks like uh, exact symmetry. But then we have this figure in the child on the right side. So how is that balanced over on the left side? And I think it's that dark shadow on the, on the left side that balances out her. All right, the ominous shape on the left balances, balances the two shapes on the right. And then here we can imagine a, uh, a, a, an axis going down the center of this. And we have different things kind of going on, but it, it, it's like an approximate symmetry, especially down below. We have, you know, on the lower left, we have earth and on the lower right, we have hell and they balance each other out. All right, the relaxed and the engaged legs and arms balance each other out in the statue of David. And then radial balance is when things kind of look like a cartwheel is always how I imagine radial balance. It comes out from the center of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the composition. And, and the definition of radial balance is elements in a work of art radiate from or rotate around the central point. And so in photography, we often get a lot of these radial type uh, compositions, and they're fun to see in nature and take pictures of. But in art, so one of the few uh, radial balances in art or radial compositions in art is this one by Rubens, where these, these limbs kind of uh, jut out from the center and create this kind of a radial, like a, almost like a, a wagon wheel or a cartwheel as, as it goes out. And then we have these curved images or these curved uh, 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 lines and movement going around. So it creates this radial balance. And we can see the radial balance radiating from the center of this R Rivera mural. Informal balance is organizing elements of a work of art so that unlike objects, can have equal visual weight. It gives the viewer the same comfortable feeling as formal balance, but a much more subtle way. It's also called asymmetrical balance. 
and it creates a more casual effect. So like this one right here, the, the boy's face is over on the right side. And so it's, uh, it's definitely not anywhere near the center, but his face is balanced out by the uh, figures there on the left. All right, this one right here, the, uh, the drama that is happening on the left is balanced by the, uh, the destruction there on the right. And this is one of those famous uh, painting or famous photo photographs from the Spanish Civil War. Definitely asymmetrical. All the energy and uh, uh, subject matter is on the left side. And here we have a balance of unlike things. So the soldier is balanced by the complicated shapes on the right. So this large woman right here is balanced by the uh, smaller complicated shapes on the right side. So the large woman, she has large, simple shapes, but the smaller man has more complicated shapes along with the cat that gives it a balance. And then, so Edward Hopper does a lot of these asymmetrical pieces. And so the large curtain and stage on the left is balanced by the small complicated shapes there on the right. The large shapes on the left are balanced by the high contrast and complicated shapes on the right. And then the, the central axis doesn't always have to be vertical. It's oftentimes horizontal. So we have these large shapes on the top of the canvas and the smaller complicated shapes on the bottom. And that's what balances out. The women are balanced by the tea set and the fireplace. The ship is balanced by the sun. All right, the open spaces on the left is balanced by the complicated shapes on the right. Again, the large open sh uh, spaces on the left are, are balanced by the smaller complicated shapes on the right. And here we just have a balance of unlike things. You know, we have these figures on the left that are balanced by the large soldiers on the right. And even like we have this balance of different colors, you know, the, the warm colors on the left are balanced by the large uh, uh, metallic shapes on the right. Again, this is very, well, the, the central image of the egg and the umbrella seem very symmetrical, but with the addition of the woman, it feels very asymmetrical. And then there's different, like even the same subject of the Last Supper with Leonardo, he makes it very symmetrical, but Tintoretto makes it very asymmetrical. All right, that'll be it for balance right now.